Hi, y'all. We're excited to have you here and want to welcome you to Flatiron Schools Don't Gamble on Your Cybersecurity, uh, part of our new Lunch and Learn series. My name is Corey Mickelson. I'm the event coordinator here with Flatiron School, and a big part of my job is hosting free introductory events like today uh, to give you an opportunity to meet some of our team and get a better feel of the Flatiron School experience. A quick little reminder, we're using the chat as the main source of communication, so make sure that little blue button is set from host and panelists to everyone so we can all chat together and you can go ahead and drop any questions you have directly into the chat. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce introduce our host for today, Eric Keith. He is one of our cybersecurity instructors. Go ahead and take it away, Eric. Awesome. Howdy, everybody. Welcome. Um, um, <clears throat> do you want me to share the screen or are you going to? I can do I'm one. working on it. It's being weird and does not. I don't know if it's going to let me. Hold on. I can do it. If not. Uh, Oh, I got it. Perfect. So welcome, everybody. Um, like she said, my name is Eric Keith. I've been with Flatiron for a couple of years now um, teaching, and I've done a lot of these. And I definitely really enjoy speaking, um, being around here. Sorry, I'm not usually on a laptop. I love desktops. So if I wiggle around, it's because I like walking around. And now my laptop moves with me. Um, and so if I jerk, it jerks. But um, welcome. So today we're going to talk about gambling, really just anything in terms of um, cybersecurity and um, gambling sites, online gambling, really it's, it's kind of term, um, referred to as e-gambling or online gambling. There's a lot of similar and like terms, but that's the primary um, term that it, it's referred to is. Uh, if you want to go on to the next slide. Perfect. So Yes, this, I believe those slides will be shared um, when the video is uploaded, I believe, and said um, within the next three days. So the agenda is um, today we're going to talk about just what modern gambling looks like, because a lot of the gambling, even with like my mom was at a casino yesterday on the way back from where I am. And what they did is they handed her a tablet that she can gamble on in the casino at the bar. Like gambling itself has transformed so much that just having it um having the internet is just basically a requirement in terms of the gambling stuff so we're going to talk about what modern day gambling looks like in this um then security priorities the vendor specific and then what you should think of um personally then common attack methods we'll go into that um i do want to note just here i am not going to go in depth into a lot of these um the purpose of these presentations are be very high level less technical, um, but you can definitely go research more in depth on your own because there are some of these that we could do full on hour, two hour full classes on just these one, like some of these things I'm gonna talk about. But it's a high level over what we're gonna talk about then previous incidents. Um, that kind of goes into it very closely, the common attack methods. And then lastly, good security practices for you to have. Um, if you have any questions, I'm usually, I'm just watching the Slack, uh, not Slack, the, the Zoom chat right here. It's up. Um, so if you have questions, pop them in and I'll try to stop if I can and answer them. Um, if not, someone might be able to, someone else from the chat might be able to answer it. I'll get to it at the end. Um, so if you want to go on to the next slide. So if you can. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, perfect. So it has changed a lot and it hasn't changed at all. Like that's, it's kind of a weird thing because we're still gambling just like we used to. Um, if you ever watch the old cowboy movies and they walk into, into a, like a saloon or into an old casino, like they're still taking sports bets. They're, that's still a thing. It's just now on your phone. Um, so sport betting is still a big thing. It actually, I would say is even more now with the increased sports, um, the ability to do it nationally across the nation. We'll talk more about their specific states that can and cannot do that. Um, but NFL, basketball, poker, like those are all big ones. Then we got online casinos, like I said, um, where you can play slots just from your phone or honestly at the casino now too. Um, roulette, craps, all of those. Then you can do lotteries, um, state lotteries and national lotteries um, at jackpocket.com, lottery.com. Those are the two primary ones. Um, we'll talk about them um, later on, but th there's hundreds of thousands. I wouldn't say that. There, there's so many of these, if you just type in on Google or whatever search engine you like, you can just type in online lotteries, online casino, online gambling, sports betting, and you'll have 
a few thousand search results from a few thousand different websites. And it's just amazing. But the problem is, and that's what I'm going to hit on today, is what is a good place to gamble? Now, it is March, and that's a big sports betting um, month because it's March Madness, a lot of big things. So that's why we're focusing on gambling this month. And it's a big deal, I would say, if you're, you're worried about or you want to gamble. So if you want to go on to the next slide, and we're going to talk about that today. Specifically, I want to talk about what are your security priorities? Um, and just watch in the chat. Um, you can't come off mute because I don't think I can hear you. Uh, but what do you think when it says vendors? And I have security priorities for vendors. Go back if you want to go back a slide. Um, to, to security priority for vendors. Brand, oh, yeah, right there. Brand and brand integrity. What does that mean? Why is that a security priority for um, an organization? If, let's look at, see if anyone posts. If no one posts, I'll answer. Reputation. Okay, that's, that's a big one. Um, any other thoughts? Why brand and brand integrity uh, has to do with reputation or something else? Trust, exactly. Um, reputation, trust comes out of their reputation, loss of trust. Exactly right. Um, and that's the big thing. Really, um, with this type of venue, they thrive on your, as you said, rep, rep, their reputation and your trust in them. Because as soon as something goes wrong, you jump ship. Um, and this is a big thing. I played a lot of brand new video games. Um, that's what I like to do. And one of the big things is the value and trust. As soon as someone, something goes wrong, there's a definite increase in the amount of people that leave said game and maybe never come back. Um, that's very similar to here. It's kind of the app or program mentality. If something goes wrong, let's go see if there's something else. Um, some people are okay wait, going through and waiting for the next update or waiting for the fix. A lot of people just jump ship. Now someone else has got it doing the exact same thing and they didn't have that problem. So we're going to jump over there. And that's a big thing here. They have to keep their, um, their brain. They have to keep their brain integrity. I watched a bunch of... Um, interviews, read a lot of documentation, and it all came down to this, where you don't really think about it as a security priority, but it is. They have to make sure that they're securing the organization to protect their brand. That's a big thing for them. And for a lot of these casinos, online gambling, sports betting sites, apps, whatever it is, they have to make sure that try really, really, really hard that they aren't attacked. And if they are, they're well protected to protect that. Because as soon as that's gone, their clientele jump ship. So that goes into availability of apps. And it, it's very similar. Um, one, they've got to make sure if something does go wrong, they handle it very well to try to get people to come back. Um, and availability of apps and sales, they've got to make sure that they're almost 100% of the time available. Because who knows when you're going to be. Um, you might hear LA's, all, I mean, Las Vegas is always on. Or um, like the, there's no downtime. People can gamble whenever they want kind of thing. Um, same thing here. Apps are always available. Internet is always on. So someone's always going to be doing some kind of sports betting, some kind of online um, gambling, even chess. That's been a big thing over the last couple. Um, that's funny to see. But it's there's gambling on anything. So the sites that host that need to make sure that they are available, because if they're not, they can't take that money in, which means if they can't take that money in, there, there's a loss of revenue, a loss of reputation, which we went into loss of trust from the, it's just a very big thing that goes together. And the last thing that kind of supersedes it, but it's, it's there and it connects to them, um, is following governmental policies. What do you think I mean by fo following governmental policies as a security priority? Now, if you're in our courses, that makes sense because we talk, we teach that very quickly. Um, but what, why is following governmental policies a big security concern? PII, that's a big thing. Um, so if anyone doesn't know, PII stands for um, Personal Identifiable Information. Um, avoid fines, exactly. Um, so PII is basically your information you need to protect. And I'm going to actually talk a lot about that with personal data in the personal section. Um, but they have to make the companies that are host these websites, that host these gambling things, there's actual national and international laws about the sites that have and their compliance and said the rules that they have to follow. And if they break those, that's in the, this, they can be up to the scale of multiple millions of dollar fines that could bankrupt them or be a hefty toll on their, that organization. Um, and so 
trying to go back. So HIPAA, that's a big thing. I wouldn't say, I don't know if HIPAA and gambling, I'd have to go, I don't know of any organization that has that, those connections, but HIPAA is, a, is specifically a compliance. Um, so if you're in healthcare, like you said, um, if not in compliance, governmentals can levy fines, exactly right. Um, so though, even though those not like set up a firewall, set up a VPN connection, what whatnot, all that stuff, those are the, the technical sides, but the reason for those prior, security priorities, setting up a firewall, setting up all that tech and making sure your computer's secure, all of that, that's the tech side, but the end goal is to protect the brand integrity, protect their apps availability. Um, follow, they, they need to follow the governmental stuff. It's kind of ad, an afterthought and a precursor. They gotta know that those are always there and always do them, but they've got to make sure that even above that, that they're making money through availability and brand integrity. So that's what the companies need to protect. When I say your priority, if you're the one going to these people and say, hey, I'm going to sign up with you. I'm going to do whatever. I want to gamble with you on, in, online. You have to protect said personal information. Someone wants to expand on that. Or what kind of um, personal data might you need to protect when you are gambling? So CC, credit card information, exactly. Um, perfect, right in a row. That's a big thing. Whatever, um, whatever kind of way you're connecting to them. A lot of these organizations, most of them that I can think of, I honestly don't remember any of them that had um, any kind of cryptocurrency. So pretty much everyone that I look at did have um, credit card as their main resource. So you got to connect your credit card information. It could be direct account to your bank or type in your credit card information, your routing numbers, whatever. You connect your, your specific credit card information to your bank, basically to these apps, however you do that. So if these companies get hacked, is that a breach of your personal data? So that goes into a lot of stuff. So credit card's a big thing. Um, a lot of these you actually have to sign up for. Um, I, I meant to get a, a listing of some of these that you have to actually sign a whole bunch of waivers saying, yes, I'm over 18. Yes, I'm eligible to be in said state to gamble. There's a bunch of these. And that's all information about you if it gets out. So you really need to make sure that <laughs> you are protection. So phone and address. Um, yeah, the, there, there are different levels of what counts as personal identifying information. Um, Many online gambling requires KYC. So home addresses and names are also concerned. What do you mean by KYC? I probably know it, but I just can't think of that term offhand. Um, know your consumer. Yeah, you got to know your consumer. Um, so you have to protect your info from being sold to third parties. Exactly. So you've got to, there's a bunch of stuff um, that you got to protect. You got to know who you're signing up with. And that's going to be the overall goal um, that when I talk through today, know who you're giving your info to because I can walk basically I just have to prove that I'm over 18 21 when I walk into LA or any because I'm not LA Las Vegas or into a casino I just need to prove I'm old enough they don't that's good enough but there's a lot more restrictions for when I'm doing it all on these apps I got to sign up I got to verify give them a bunch of information um, and so that's what you as the personal need to protect and that's kind of what I'm going to prioritize but there's a lot more cases of vendor-based um, stuff we're gonna um, talk about. So if you wanna go on to the next slide. So these are the laws and I wanted to hit these on pretty quickly. These are, these are just basic examples. You, wherever you are, uh, make sure that not just US or whatever, make sure your state specifically um, has specific rules or, or regulations about gambling. Um, but almost everywhere has some kind of rules or it will say, no, there are no rules. Um, but these are the laws regarding some basic um, online gamblings. I guess they depend on the, they're dependent on your country or region. Um, U.S. specifically has the UIGEA, the Unlawful Internet Gambling Enforcement Act. Um, what does and does not count, or does not qualify as lawful or unlawful gambling. So um, it says brief description, like it says here, online gambling they do vary per state. Some states completely legalized online gambling. Um, while others definitely not. So while some of these are like, yeah, we can go wherever, just turn on a VPN or whatever, that's not necessarily legal. Um, and that's, that goes into other stuff. But the federal government has also passed laws that restrict online gambling with these, these rules. 
So you got wherever the state is that you reside, that you live in, those are the rules that you follow in the US. United Kingdom, um, United Kingdoms are actually pretty cool. Um, they follow, they have the G gambling commission, but they also have very similar to the GDPR where there's connected, if you know what the GDPR is, um, government's rights and privacy act um, regulations for um, EU residents, um, really cool privacy act, Canada, Australia, there's a bunch of them, but these are the stuff you're gonna know, you need to know if you're gonna do any kind of e online gambling, even if it's just for a basic sport. All right, if you wanna keep going. So now that I've talked about the basic, the boring rules, let's get into the fun stuff. What are, these are the three most common attack methods. I even asked Ch Chad GPT because that's been my best friend this last couple of weeks. Um, but I did research to make sure what it spit out was right. Um, and it said um, DOS, DDoS specifically, ransomware and malware. I got that, watched a bunch of, and read a bunch of um, interviews, articles. They all came down to these three things. DOS being the heaviest. So DDoS, as it says, it's the aims of a DDoS, a direct denial of service attack, is to disrupt the normal functioning of a targeting system. Why, going along with the, the, the key things that vendors, um, organizations that do cy um, cyber gambling, whatever we want to call it, online gambling, um, going with their security priorities why do you think dos attacks basically an attempt for it disrupting normal functions is the biggest kind of attack and i think it was by far why is that the most common aligning with what their security priorities are hopefully that question makes sense if not nathan's here and he's my boss and he'll answer it for me exactly loss of revenue that's one perfect um so there is a loss of revenue if the company's not available they're going to lose money um a dos attack their whole purpose is basically make it so they can't do their thing it could be that they're just doing hackers are just doing it for fun it could be what it, i mean that's that's a very common one but it's th there's a lot of reasons for a dos attack uh, but the main target is to disrupt service that's what it stands for um denial of service so there's a lot of different ways. It could be as, as, as much as just going in and pulling the plug. It could be flooding with so many um, re internet requests that it just can't, their firewalls and route, their stuff can't support it. Um, there's a lot of ways, but the main thing is causes financial and reputation damage. Remember their main thing is to protect their brand, um, brand protection. So that goes into reputation damage. If it, they, hackers or organizations might be hired to you, hey, this is a, this is a comp competing organization. We don't like them. We'll hire you to, like I said, get their clientele to jump ship. As soon as something bad goes wrong, people jump ship. And I was actually amazed. I personally haven't been part of that. The organizations that I've worked for, um, that's not as much of a thing as, it, it's a real thing for sure, but I just haven't been on that. But a lot of the interviews I watched, they were talking about um so, so one of the main guys that he he his he's done for the last like 10 years or whatever um he talked he's seen that quite a bit where he was an after incident response uh, reporter on um a lot of these gambling things and he saw that a lot where he he pointed back to sec um competing organizations hiring hackers or people to um do something to get their clientele to jump to them because something bad happened to the the main organization but then ransomware. Ransomware is another one. Um, it's a type of malware that encrypts victims' files or machines. Basically, um, this is going into know your organization, and I'll hit on that very. Um, I'll hit on that a lot. Know who you're giving your data to. I would not personally give my data to a not uh, an organization that's not well known. Uh, if it's not a really big name organization, casino, or meets some of the qualifications that I'll talk about later. I just won't give them my info because who knows if they're legitimate. Um, they might not have good security policies that they're not telling us. Um, but there are a lot of things. Here, I'll turn off my camera in case that is a thing. Um, but there are a lot there. So we want to make sure um, 
that you're going to the right websites because what if a hacker has gone on there and added files or done what's called um, drive-by attacks, made it so there's links or websites that you go, you go to a, a what looks like a casino website and it downloads a file onto your machine. And that, that file, when it's run, encrypts every file on your machine. There's a lot that happens and that would be the ransomware attack. And then finally malware, um, getting malware. Like I said, malware is any type of software specifically designed um, to harm, exploit, or gain unauthorized access to a company system. So an attack happens, and then, or some, some way, malware gets onto their system through some of these casino websites. It actually happens quite a lot. Um, can you go to the next slide? So those are the three main types of attacks. And here's some data to back those up. Um, one is back in the 2016. This is the actual UK National Lottery. This was their physical lottery. I will say it up front, but their data is supported, their servers. Everything was on, like all the data for the, um, the national lotteries on computers. And those systems, um, access, hackers access no less than 26,500 accounts. And they didn't do a lot, but at least they were able to record over 50 accounts that had notably been changed. That was the first real I would, I would count um, that could count as um, a cyber attack against online gambling or some kind of server cyber gamble where technically it was still physical, but the data was on machines. Then the real definite one um, that I found recordings of were March, 2020. There were some small ones before it, but this was a big one. This is a data breach where it, they recorded it for a full month and they lost 50 gigabytes of data on customers, on the company, um, intellectual property. That's 200 million data, um, records basically files per day um that was basically found between a month long period that they had recordings for so clubillion was um a casino based organization online where they data was definitely attacked and they definitely had 50 gigabytes of data lost per day by attackers that's a lot going back to protect your personal data going back to companies they didn't do very well afterwards the they, I, I can't remember offhand, um, but they, they did not handle that. The company themselves didn't handle the breach very well. I don't think they released the data um, and told their clients, hey, we've been breached until significantly time after. And they weren't really ready security wise. So their brand took a deep, deep dive and they didn't really, I think they're slowly, I think the company might be back up and running now, but it took a long time because just, even if they didn't get on there, branding is a big thing. Um, it could be on my side, I'm sorry. Um, and then SB Tech, so that's another organization. Um, ransomware attack that led to the systems being down for a full week. That was a full just DOS attack. They, they attacked them so long, the company themselves in March 2020, same month, just turned off their systems to say it would be better to not have our system on and keep getting hacked, then have it on, keep getting hacked and try to keep running our organization. So they just turn their systems off. Um, that's SB Tech. I think SB Tech was actually bought out by DraftKings um, down below. Then we had SBG, Sky Betting and Gambling, um, where hackers stole the privacy data, um, private data of up to 120,000 people. Big one, it was all over the news. Um, that was in October, 2020. As you can see, 2020 wasn't good for um, the e-gambling world. Then we had these Chinese gambling companies. This was one I'll talk about um, right after this, but this was a specific mail-based, malware-based attack where um, you go there, you click on a bad link, and that bad link downloads a file into your system and will eventually spawn a remote access trojan or a rat um, where the attacker can get access to control all of your, your computer machine. Basically, I think it was a Windows machine. Um, we'll take a, look, take a look at that one right afterwards. And then finally, the DraftKings one. This is one of the newer ones as of November 2022. So just a few months ago, in all honesty. Um, so this has definitely been around. It's not as prevalent as healthcare or um, education. or, But gambling is a definite thing out there that has been attacked, just like a lot of everything else. But it also, there's less rules. There's less people caring or watching. There's a lot of organizations that say, I won't handle that because it's a moral thing. 
So a lot of people won't um, even recognize this as something to protect truly. Um, and so let's go on, but those are the main things. And they all fell under that malware ransomware or DOS attack process. So if you can go on to the next slide and let's look at that Chinese gambling one. It was a BioPass was the actual attack. BioPass rat um, specifically attacked those Chinese organizations. The attack involves, I'm not gonna, it's, it's actually a pretty intricate attack but basically it downloads a file. You go to their website and it would download files to your computer and it would look like old Adobe Flash players or their Adobe Reader, Microsoft Silverlight. Um, old files for systems specifically um, that programs that don't, aren't really used as much anymore, but they are an actual thing. So they'd be like, hey, that's just an old file. I probably downloaded it at some point. And people are really bad at download, deleting their downloads folder. So they just leave it. That was a premise of the attack and it was very successful. Um, now, the big thing about this specific attack was that it actually only attacked random gambling websites in China. The, not really anywhere else, but it was very prevalent and it was covered by a lot of, a lot of organizations like um, Trend Micro Researcher. They're a pretty uh, well-known organization for tech documents. Um, they're in the news, I think NBC, uh, um, Fox News or the New York Times. I think a lot of those organizations did cover this because this biopass rat wasn't just in gambling. This is just where we saw it here, um, where it would basically traps um, a connection, download it, and install malware onto your system. Um, if you want to research this more in depth, like I said, this is a high level explanation. I'm not really meant to get into the weeds of what it is. But the whole point was they went, the um, clients went to this, these casino websites, assuming that they were well protected and they weren't. And that's where these um, attacks and that's where the hackers got into your systems. Then let's go on to the next one. Um, I really like this next one um, against DraftKings. DraftKings by far is the king of online gambling, especially in America. Um, if you haven't seen an ad or um, the app on the app store, because it's all, at least for me, I don't even gamble and it's always there. Um, but it's DraftKings is a big, well-known organization in the terms of sports gambling. They go down from NFL, Major League Baseball, hockey. Um, that you, I think you can do your um, can't remember what they're um, your specific whatever. Um, they have esport gambling on there, a bunch of stuff. So what the um as it says here this is an actual twitter post i actually like this because it's straight from the organization and it was documented um there's still documents coming out about it they're still doing their after accident reports but DraftKings is aware and this is what they said that customers are experiencing irregular activity with their accounts specifically it goes into we currently believe that the login information of these customers were com was comprised on other websites and then used to access their DraftKings. we have identified less than three hundred thousand dollars of customer funds that were affected and we intend to make whole and, and any customers that were impacted as you can say we we encourage strongly we strongly encourage customers to use unique passwords for DraftKings and all other websites basically as you can see is DraftKings. what they're saying is hey you got hacked because you use the same password on our site as you do on some other site that's been hacked and that was really what happened here was that we talk, if you ever heard anything about security, it's don't use bad passwords. This is generic, that's been talked about for 30 years, I would say. Um, don't use bad passwords or common passwords. Don't reuse passwords, so use unique passwords. DraftKings is trying to cover their brand. Not honestly, and I don't, there's a lot of courts that would say, no, they're not at fault, and I don't think they are, because they were, how those accounts that are attacked are actually found to be using correct passwords. So it looks to the systems, people are logging in correctly because they have the legitimate password and the hackers got those passwords because they hacked another company or bought those um, passwords on the black, mar uh, black dark web or wherever and are just using them because those people that have DraftKing accounts you had accounts on other websites. But once again, brand integrity is the biggest thing. So DraftKing released the statement saying, hey, we're gonna, we have identified less than $300,000 of customer funds, which is really not that much um, in the big scheme. To me, it's a lot. And we intend to make whole any customers that were impacted. They don't honestly probably have to, 
but they're going to for that brand integrity because that's what they got to secure. If something goes wrong, people jump ship. So this is one of, I really like this one personally because I think it, it testifies every other attack was the server's fault. They didn't protect it right. Um, they, were, they were bad servers anyways. Um, they weren't watching their logs, whatever it is. This one specifically, it wasn't their fault. Now I think I'm gonna go into um, specific things about um, setting up accounts on these websites and what to look for. But DraftKings, in my opinion, wasn't their fault. They had the correct stuff. They had security implemented. And the, the way attackers got in was because their clients did not secure themselves correctly. So if you wanna go on to the next slide. So we're almost done here, but this is the big thing that I wanna stress. What security actions should you take? Looking at those two attacks, one was they went, um, the Chinese one, the bio rat, you go to a bad website, downloads a bad link. That's, that's a common attack, not just in the gambling world. We know, hey, don't go to unrecognized websites. If you don't trust the website, don't go there. Gambling is one of those that I would say is, hey, it's probably not trusted unless it has a really, it's, it's a very well-known one. We know DraftKings, we know, but DraftKings is a very popular one and they're very well known to for, try to protect your security. I would trust them, but I would make sure that they have what's called 2FA. Who knows what 2FA is? Two-factor authentication, exactly. Two-factor authentication is um, basically if they log in with a password, you get a text on your phone or you get an email or there's a specific code that you've got to enter before you can actually log in. So there's two different forms of authentication to get into the system. Those attacks that were compromised on DraftKings obviously did not have that because they just used the passwords to get in. And they were passwords that were on other websites. So my recommendation, and this is a recommendation that's been that I've said and a lot of other people have said for many years now, if two-factor authentication is not offered, um, I don't recommend it as much. Now, Scott, you said two-factor authentication, unfortunately, usually makes huge assumptions about your possession of the phone, 24-7 global. You're 100% right. It does make um, assumptions about stuff. Now, phones aren't the only ones. You have Wi-Fi access to 5G. Um, but on the uh, flip side, I would also say um, now, there are other ways, there are keys um, that you can set up two-factor authentication with, but a lot of these, I would say with two-factor authentication, you're putting your personal data on there, you want to protect it right. And having a multiple level system to get in is important. Now, sometimes you're right, only one password is correct. I would make sure that password is very long and it's not used on any other website going to being a unique password but i would make it a unique password anyways and personally implement two-factor authentication well yes it does have an huge assumption you have possession of a phone um not necessarily a phone it can be your computer access to a wi-fi but you have some kind of access to another device um it doesn't have to be your phone honestly there's a lot of ways to not have to have a phone it could be a laptop tablet but it does need to be a technical device could be a watch. Um, I can do two-factor authentication just with my watch and websites. Um, but it does require another machine having some kind of Wi-Fi or 4G, 5G, even three, um, maybe 3G a connection, some kind of inter internet connection, yes. Um, or text messages, really. Um, but it needs a second form. That would be my have big thing, especially, um, I would recommend it on any website, but especially those websites that you're not so sure about, I would make sure you're, if it's not offering two-factor authentication, my recommendation is don't use it. Even if it's a well-known one, if it's not offered, don't use it. It's not hard to set up on a server side for the company um, and one, it boosts their brain recognition, so why haven't they done it? And two, it does protect you more if used correctly. Um, then it, I would say validate the site before you use that website, before you use that, that app. Um, it's some of these, if you go onto the app store, there's thousands of gambling apps. How many of them actually pay any money out? That's just a, a side note. Like I would research before you give your info because someone said it earlier, you give them their info, your info. A lot of these companies, 
their job is just to sell your info to somewhere else. So they make some kind of cute app that does something that draws you in and they sell your info to someone else. I've been to conventions where I had booths um, specifically and the people next to us, that was their draw. They even would openly say, hey, sign here, type in, write down all of your info. And if you do, you can play, this was back when um, VR was first getting big. So they had a VR set and they just, you, you were able to play Beat Saber there. That was their draw, but everyone wanted to play Beat Saber because it was brand new and no one had um, an Oculus or VR back then. So there was hundreds of people in line and all their, they would openly say, we're going to sell your data and people didn't care. Um, I would validate your stuff. Research the company before you give them their info and your money. You connect your bank account to them, your credit card. You have to give them, you have to prove oftentimes, I think I went on DraftKings or one of the other ones, you're, you have to actually give them a a picture of your um, your license to prove you're over 21 or you're 21 or older. Like you have to actually give them a lot of info, trusting that they're secure. Most of them, they have to pass those national regulations, but still you're giving them a lot of info. What if they are breached? Um, so your priority is making sure you're, you're doing due diligence. Their priority is making sure that they're, they're securing your data. So use unique strong passwords, like I said. I would combine that with two-factor authentication. And lastly, it is a security thing. Gamble wisely. Um, if you're going to do it, I'm not saying don't do it. Like I said, my mom went there yesterday. I don't have a qualm with it, but do it, do it well because there are psychological ramifications that can come out of it. Um, but those are my main things. There's a lot of ways. But at the end of the day, gambling, protecting your data on a gambling site, in my opinion, is absolutely no different than protecting your data on any other website. Do your due diligence. Don't go to it if you don't trust it. Um, if there's, if it's not a rep reputable site, don't go there. If it doesn't prioritize security, don't go there. Um, sure, there are a lot of old websites that I do love that I'm not going to lie, I still like going to. But I don't make sure that none of my info is going to be given to them. And usually I do use a VPN of some kind. But prioritize your data. And you don't have to follow any of these recommendations. That's up to you. But that was what I would recommend. Prioritize, be smart with your data um, because that's what is keeping you and um, that's what you've got to protect. The company has a bunch to protect, making sure they're not getting hacked, making sure that they're secure, making sure they're following national organizations. But yours is making sure you're doing due diligence and you're protecting your stuff. All right, if you wanna go on to the next slide, I think it's just sources. Um, but any questions or concerns, quibbles, questions, comments that you don't like what I said. I apologize for the um, drops if there was any. All right. Well, thank you. Oh, it looks like questions, but not really about this. So um, there are more some webinars, I think like this in the future, not necessarily about gambling, but I think we're trying to do one a month. Is that right? Yes. Uh, the next one is going to be on the environmental protection and cybersecurity. We're focusing on water and cyber from all of the new um, <clears throat> just all of the recent news that's come up and with the White House uh, actually looking into water safety and cybersecurity, um, which I will grab the link for that. If anybody is interested in learning more about Flatiron School, I have dropped a link in the chat for you to schedule a conversation with one of our admissions reps. And I will grab the link for our upcoming cyber event, which will be in um, mid-April, I believe it's April 19th. I'm not on my normal computer for this because my other computer doesn't like Zoom for some reason. So when I'm hosting these, I have to go on a separate computer and I don't have all of my links saved. Um, boop, boop. Don't water down your cybersecurity. It'll be Wednesday, April 19th, again, 1 to 2 p.m. There's the link for that if anybody's interested in joining.
And thank you again, Eric. This was an amazing presentation. Thank you everybody for joining. And if we don't have any further questions, we'll go ahead and end just a little bit early and you'll get an extra 15 minutes back. Oh, there we go. Uh, when gambling online, is it safer just to link it to a separate card on top of a VPN and a 2FA? Um, so that's where, um, so like you gotta, in my opinion, you've got to decide, uh, know what those are for. So VPN is, is really to protect the connection between you and them. Um, so I think I did a VPN topic last year. Um, on this, I think it's been a while, um, but it, I don't even think that was the main topic. It was just a big question that I um, was raised then. But before I get too much down, actually, um, Nathan, you, you had a question or you got a comment on this? Yeah, so uh, if you're using a VPN, most likely those online sites are not going to allow you to do anything because they're geolocation based. So if you're putting in a VPN that says, I live in New York where this, or New Jersey where this is legal, but you actually live in Wyoming where it's not, that, or even if you live in New York where it is legal and you're putting on a VPN just to try and obscure your location, it's not going to allow you to place any wager just because it has to have geolocation services enabled. Exactly. And that's, I think, exactly right, because that, that's what I was going to say. Um, it's all about the, the purpose is to protect the connection between them, but it, it flips. And one thing, even before the VPN, you have to prove on these websites, a lot of they have to prove where you live. Like you've got to give them information about where you live and back it up, at least the ones I've seen. And that would get to, get to prove. So if you're like, hey, I'm, I live in New York or I live in Wyoming, but I'm VPN in New York, well, you got to prove where you live to get access accounts. And not all of them, um, but the VPN, like I said, like he said, it's it, there's a big state regulations, and it's it, unless you're like, hey, I'm trying to protect myself. I live in New York, but I'm going to use a VPN that connects to another machine in New York, which is that that's the thing. Um, but I would, for the most, that's a different thing. Where I would VPN isn't as it's going to mess up a lot of things, kind of like Nathan was saying. Um, now, if you live in New York, like I said, and you're vaping in another machine in New York to protect your connection and um, kind of hide where you're at, you could do that. And that may or may not work. It might just say, hey, this VPN IP address is well known and we're not going to allow you to use that. That's a popular thing. Netflix, um, a lot of organizations like that will be like, hey, I'm not going to let you on here. This is a popular IP address that's been noted as um, and we're not going to allow from this IP address. And I wouldn't, I would suspect. Um, a lot of gambling sites have that going back to those national rights because if they break those the companies are found out to be broken those they're going to be hundreds of thousands of dollars most likely of fines and they prefer just not to have their on their app than for them to break their app their to spend thousands of dollars on fines um does that make would you agree with that nathan i think i quoted you right <clears throat> Yeah, I was looking for the 100 reaction, but yes, <laughs> exactly. Eric, you did the the uh, build your own lamp stack, right? Um, I think so. Okay. Um, well, if that's it, here's, yeah, here's the link from last April, actually. Almost a full year. Look at that. <laughs> um, I think I did that one. And then there was, I think that a lot of that was, oh, set up your uh, Wi-Fi or set up a firewall was another one, I think. And then okay. VPN questions were on there. Um, but the VPN, I think, would be a different one. Two-factor authentication, um, the question was, when gambling is online is safer to just link? When is gambling online? When gambling online is it safer to just link it to a separate card? Um, I, I don't know. You have to give them so much data about you that it, it's hard to get to determine what you're protecting. Um, and that goes into two-factor authentication, protects getting in. All a VPN does is can protect the connection from you to them. Um, and that goes into our using the right VPN and a lot of other stuff. I found it. The lowdown of firewalls and PFSense. Perfect. Got one. <laughs> um, what is the best way to block malware and automatic downloads to prevent rats? An internal firewall, in my opinion. Um, a f an, um, firewall on your machine. Um, now, this is a different thing on your phone, but especially on your computer that you're using have some kind of antivirus um, on there 
um, that I use malware bytes and it's really cool. There's a free version. I'm not, I'm not a rep for them. There's plenty of um, apps that are just like this, um, but they do protections. Um, some of them will monitor your web traffic. Anything that's downloaded is scanned before it can be run. And if it doesn't like it, it does what's called quarantine it and puts it in a spot. And you have to personally go in there and say, yes, this is good before you can run it. Um, that, in my opinion, would be a great way to prevent a lot of those. Above that, I would say just don't go to those bad sites. Um, but, or to check if you already have scanned, that would be a, the, an antivirus. So they're um, an antivirus, scan your website or scan your machine, excuse me, and make sure you have what is called a root kit scanner enabled. Personally, I'm not a rep for Malwarebytes. I just like it because it's really powerful for free. There's plenty of them like it, um, but make sure it has a root kit scanner. Not all of them allow you to do this for, for free. Um, Malwarebytes does, but click that, scan it, and it can take a long time, especially that first time. Um, but that's how you would check to see if you already have it. Um, if you are scared, you can just wipe the data and restart your entire computer, but that's a really extreme thing I don't recommend. Um, but what, what I would say is just run a fire scan. Um, make sure it's always enabled. That would be something that um, back when I did IT, um, and that was when IT and security were definitely very similar. Um, it was, I can't tell you how many times that my company, my customers would get viruses because they would turn their antivirus scanner off because they were tired of it slowing down their machine or running while they were in a meeting or whatever. Um, nowadays, modern computers have enough RAM and other stuff that it can run in the background and it's probably not even noticeable. So that would be what I would say. Um, but good questions. Any other questions? Awesome, I think that's just about it then. I think I got all the questions I hope I did. Is the Windows Defender enough to protect your machine? Uh, yeah, it's actually very pop, um, powerful for sure. Um, yeah, I, it's, it's, it's powerful. I don't know, it's been a long time since I've used that as my primary one, but when I have used in test environments, um, it picks up the malware almost instantly. Um, so it is definitely popular. Nathan might know this more about this because um, he was on our curriculum side for a while. But it's once again, it's, it's really just there's so many different vendors out there now that they all are very powerful if they're updated and maintained. And Windows Defender is much more powerful than it used to be. I just don't know use it on a daily basis as my primary. So I think it is, but I don't remember if it, I don't know if it does web scanning and that's one thing I do like. Um, it, it checks what's downloaded and what sites you go to and all that. Um, but if anyone else on there, not just Nathan, but anyone knows, that'd be a good thing to look. Okay, yeah. Are online gambling sporting bets using Splunk for customer info? Maybe, uh, I didn't, up on that, um, but they are probably using some Splunk or some kind of other um, event correlation tool to detect all that to gain, not necessarily for customer, I mean, it could be for customer info, but to really check what, um, let's say, take DraftKings for instance. Um, I'm getting a thing where my, doesn't like my internet connection. But um, the big thing is you've got to detect what is the priority for that organization. And they're going to try to grab that information most. So if I have 100,000 people going to Major League Baseball gambling, I'm going to want to put that up front on my website. So that'd be kind of the data that they're going to gather and correlate together to, to, to try to market the right, the best thing. So they might be using Splunk, they might be using something else, um, but they'll have some kind of marketing tool behind it um, or event correlation tool, most likely. Do you have any other last minute questions? Thank, thank you all for taking time out of your day today and joining us for this. We always appreciate it. And a big shout out to Eric for doing all the research on this and putting my crazy harebrained schemes together. <laughs> she did most of the research, I'm not gonna lie. I just put them together. 
Well, we hope to see you at another one of our events. Thanks again for taking time out of your day to join us. And if you have any questions, like I said, I dropped that link in the chat for schedule with admissions, as well as two other of our um, cybersecurity events. And our next event will be on April 19th. Have a great day, everybody. Bye, y'all.